So I've done a couple masking tutorials and I thought I would show another way to do masking. And this is actually two different layers and I masked only one of them. So I have the color one and then I have a black and white version underneath. And I use the mask to highlight different parts of the image. This is something you can also do with the spotlight and I have a tutorial for that, but this is another way. You don't actually have to use it with the black and white, but you can use it just to highlight different parts of it. So let me show you how I did this. What I did is I got one of the newer scenes are really good because they're so bright. I tried a few different ones um, because I couldn't find an old ver a picture, uh, old video that I had done. Um, is it in here? There we go. Sorry, I went right by it. I go too fast. So I have my scene and I'm just going to expand it. And then I duplicate that. So I'm just doing Command D. And on the one underneath, I'm going to make that, I'm going to click on it, rename it to the black and white. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go up to effects and components, and I'm going to get the filters and the effect, and I'm just going to make it a little bit. I think I might have done a few other things to it. Um, Maybe not, um, but that way when we put the color over it, you'll get to see the difference. I definitely wanted the background to be different so this would stand out. Sorry, I had to pause. I was holding in a cough and I couldn't hold it in anymore. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna grab a circle. You can use any of the shapes that you want, but I'm just gonna use a circle. I'm going to make it a little smaller. This is going to be my mask. And I am going to mask this colored version of the living room. So I'm just going to select both of these, right click, mask. Now you can see part of it is colored and part isn't. But let me click on that again. I'm going to detach the mask over here. Right now, if I try to move it, it's moving the image as well. So see now it's covering the table. So let me, if I click on this and detach the mask, now I can move it. So it's seeing all the different parts and it's not moving the image underneath it. So I didn't put any characters in here, but here I had a character. Let me just quickly grab, um, I think they call her a lady. Although I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, she is business lady, but we'll just grab another one. I'm going to click on her and I'm going to have her sitting and checking papers. I'm going to click and disable the starting animation because I don't really want her to start there. I'm going to, I have a lot of this in other tutorials, so I'm just going to show you quickly. I'm going to put her in the chair. She doesn't fit completely well. She's sitting on the arm, but we can always adjust for what we need. The underneath, I definitely, I think what I might have done is a rectangle, expand it, change it to black, and then just lower the opacity a little bit because I really want, there, that's better, right? Now, the colored image really stands out from the black and white. The other thing that you want to look at here, if we move the mask, we can, let me lock her. 
because every time I move it, it's going to move her. Now I can move this. I can reshape it if I want just a little bit. I can do all sorts of things with this. The other thing that I like to do is this is kind of harsh, right? The line around here. So if you click on the mask, you're going to find different ways that you can play around with that. You can make a border, you can make a shadow. What I tend to do is go up here to effects, get edge feather, drop it on. This will pop up, but if you happen to go off, all you have to do is click on the image again and up here in effects, click on feather. And now I can blur it a little and it doesn't look as harsh. I might even blur it a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to effects, feather. You can make it as much as you want. That kind of takes away that harsh look. So I'm going to turn off the feather for a minute. Now I'm going to turn it on. I like the, I like the feathering effect, but you can do whatever you want. In the spotlight tutorial, you'll see that that has a feather option as well. Now we want to animate this to move around. I'm not going to take the time to fill in all the characters, but say I've done enough with her. I can click on the asset, add an animation, position, scale. I'll just use linear. Go to the end keyframe. I can move it and make it a different um, size if I want. So let's see what that does. I might make that not as speedy, or I can even make it bigger if I want it to go from smaller to bigger. And then you just keep adding new animations to wherever you want the mask to go. Now, we're going to look outside in the backyard because there's something out there. And then it's going to go and look in the backyard. So that's just another way you can animate masks. You can, again, use triangle, rectangle, square, whatever it is you want to do, and you can continually change it to different shapes. I'm sorry, different sizes, different um, orientations, and the circle becomes an oval or whatever it is you want to do. Have fun.